What's up you guys, Rex here. So, another week of medical school in the books, another week of living the dream, had my cardio exam on Monday, which means I got an off weekend. So the first thing I wanted to just briefly mention is my cardio exam on Monday. I thought it was very similar to all the other exams, but the general consensus right after the exam of all my classmates was like, oh my gosh, that was horrible, I'm gonna fail, all that kind of stuff. But then the average came out and it was actually just right in line with all the other exams as far as the average was like an 89 point something, which is like within a half a percentage of all the other averages of the three previous exams. And the average was actually a little bit higher than like the second exam. So it was very interesting that there was a huge disconnect between people's perception of how they did and how they actually performed based on the average. So I'll probably do like a follow-up video just sort of talking about that because I thought that was an interesting phenomenon that occurred. But the main purpose of this video is to do what I plan to do every Sunday and that is share something cool I learned in a week of medical school. So usually it's gonna be something very like medical related or anatomical, but this week it's actually kind of historically related. And that's because we spent time learning about this like Trent collection, which is a lot of like primary documents related to medicine that the Duke School of Medicine has. And one of the documents we particularly talked about was the Pernkampf, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I really hope I'm pronouncing it wrong almost in certain sense, but it's this guy Pernkampf he made this topographical atlas of man or topogra topographical anatomy of man, depending on what translation it is, whatever it is. And so it's very interesting because this anatomical text was used for a long time and it wasn't until the 70s that it really came to light the history of this guy per comp who was like legitimately a Nazi. I shouldn't say even like, this guy legitimately was a Nazi and not in the sense that people throw around that accusation of calling someone like a Nazi nowadays, which I think is sort of trivializing the actual horrible people who were Nazis during World War II. So this guy actually was a Nazi when he worked at the University of Vienna. He got rid of all of the Jews in his department and he made this anatomy atlas, probably using prisoners that were political prisoners and part of the cleansing that was trying to be done by the Nazi regime, just absolutely horrible. And this guy was apparently very obvious about it that in his anatomy text, he has his signature on all of these drawings he did, and he like has a swastika inside of his signature or has the SS lightning bolts in his signature, like very huge proponent of Nazism, horrible person. And so this sort of now has led to an ethical dilemma of do we use, we being the medical profession, do we still use this textbook to teach from? And we talked about how it's sort of wild that apparently this textbook is still in some ways like the best textbook available. And it seems like particularly in the area of like peripheral nerve surgery that the drawings this guy did are still like the best people have. And so it's sort of a, an interesting ethical dilemma and I'll link to a bunch of articles down below. And one of them is very interesting and I think it's New York Times, so you might have to, it might be behind a paywall. Um, but it is really interesting that it talks about this like Palestinian surgeon who was operating on a Jewish patient of his and he ended up having to reference this Nazi medical textbook. And just sort of a very interesting ethical dilemma that surrounds this of, do we want to benefit from the work of Nazis, particularly if a lot of the knowledge this guy gained was from dissecting potentially people totally against their will who were victims of the Nazi regime. And so I guess I, I sort of think this is interesting as part of a larger discussion of one aspect of medical ethics is how we come to gain information and how much information in medicine has been gained from potentially unethical means. And so I, I sort of think it's, it's a difficult thing to balance of where I think it's important as doctors that we at all times provide the best care possible in any situation. And in my opinion, which maybe this will change, I'm not close to a doctor yet even, that as a doctor in the future, 
I will have an obligation to my patients to provide them the best care and use the best resources available to me, regardless of where they came from. That I think it would be unethical to my patients to say that you will not get the best care because by using some resource, I would be in some way supporting this or something like that. I don't think that's true. I think that regardless of where information, especially medical information comes from, if it is the best available and can be used to better other people's care and better other people's lives, as a doctor, I have an obligation to use that. Now, the real interesting thing, which I don't really have an opinion on yet, that I'm, I'm forming this opinion, is do I have an obligation to prote- potentially share with my patients where I got this information? And so I definitely think in medical teaching, if you were to ever use this textbook to teach students, you have an obligation to share with them the history of the textbook and the fact that it is a product of the Nazi regime. But I don't know if I have the obligation to tell a patient of mine that like, hey, you're going to get this surgery, but just so you know, we're using Nazi medicine to help you. That I I think that's sort of a gray area of, I don't know how I feel about ever telling my patients about something that might discourage them from seeking the best care they possibly can receive. But I also don't want it to be like totally hidden. So I, I guess I'll, I'll learn more about that. And I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on if you were to use a textbook such as Pern Comps in a surgery, do you have an obligation to share with your patients the history behind that and be upfront that this resource has a horrible past and horrible way that it was brought about, but also that you are benefiting from it. So that's an interesting gray area that I don't really know where I fall or or where I'll go. And so there's this balance between, I think we need to use whatever information we have available, but also not blindly be like, oh, any information is good and say that in a way that is ever encouraging these atrocities to be repeated and that I think like in their lifetime if anybody does some unethical research even if it has good data that comes from it and that can be used to benefit people I don't think it's ever right to allow that person who did the unethical research to benefit from it in any way that while the information can be used it can't be used if they're benefiting from it maybe I don't know I'd I'd really love to hear your thoughts down below. But that was just the most interesting thing we talked about this week in medical school. And it really got me thinking about that. Again, would love to hear anyone's thoughts because I do not consider myself an expert in medical ethics by any means, not even a doctor yet, barely a medical student. But that's what I had to share for this week. And just real quick, I want to give a quick channel update that I think going forward, I'm just going to go two uploads a week now because I feel like I want to focus on more quality over quantity kind of thing. So I'll be having my Sunday upload, as always, on reflecting on my week and sharing something cool I learned. Additionally, I'll have at least one more upload that might be on anything from life advice in general or advice related to applying to medical school or advice for undergraduate students to something more medical, medically related. Or I also want to start doing some videos on finance, particularly related to finance of undergrads and medical students and student loans and navigating through that whole mess of a system that we currently have. But if you have any suggestions of stuff you'd like to hear, I'd always like to hear about them. Questions, comments, concerns down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.